Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine, and welcome to a new week, week 12, um, or proper 12, in, um, in the schedule of the church. Today, we are honoring two women of the New Testament, Martha and Mary of Bethany, who were the um, sisters of Lazarus. They are described in the Gospels, according to Luke and John, as close and well-loved friends of Jesus. That's important for us to remember um, in relation to our own um, relationship with Jesus. He doesn't relate to Martha and um, her siblings as leader or um, mentor or um, even son of God. He relates to them as friends. And um, it's our belief that he also wants to relate to us as friends. So um, Luke records the well-known story of their hospitality, which has made Martha a symbol of the active life and Mary of the contemplative. Some commentators would take the words of Jesus to be a defense of that which Mary does best and a commendation of Martha for what she does best. And that's something that we also have to remember, that we all have different gifts and different personalities. And we should celebrate what we do well and what we enjoy doing rather than thinking that we have to do things that are not fitted to our natures, or for that matter, perhaps not intended by God to be our primary activity. Well, we could say quite a bit about these two people, but for that, um, for now rather, we will begin our, our um, service today on page 78 and quickly move into page 80. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. Page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Now turning to page 82, we will say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Psalms. This morning we will read Psalms 56 and 57, found on page 662. Whole verse responsibly. Have mercy, <clears throat> have mercy on me, O God, for my enemies are hounding me all day long. They assault and oppress me. They hound me all the day long. Truly, there are many who fight against me, O Most High. Whenever I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust and will not be afraid. For what can flesh do to me? All day long, they damage my cause. Their only thought is to do me evil. They band together. They lie in wait. They spy upon my footsteps because they seek my life. Shall they escape despite their wickedness? O oh God, in your anger, cast down the peoples. You have noted my lamentation. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not recorded in your book? Whenever I call upon you, my enemies will be put to flight. This I know, 
for God is on my side. In God the Lord, whose word I pray, in God I trust and will not be afraid. For what can mortals do to me? I am bound by the vow I made to you, O God. I will present to you thank offerings. For you have rescued my soul from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the land of the living. Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful, for I have taken refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until this time of trouble has gone by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who maintains my cause. He will send from heaven and save me. He will confound those who trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions that devour the people. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongue a sharp sword. They have laid a net for my feet, and I am bowed low. They have dug a pit before me, but have fallen into it themselves. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. My heart is firmly fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and make melody. Wake up, my spirit. Awake, lute and harp. I myself will waken the dawn. I will confess you among the peoples, O Lord. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your love and kindness is greater than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from, the, uh, from Joshua. The people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us, brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and who did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way that we went, and among all the peoples whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites, who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that which are among you and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. And he took a great stone and set it up there among the orchard, among the oak in the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this storm, this stone shall be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord which he spoke to us. Therefore, it shall be a witness against you lest you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away, every man to his inheritance. After these things, Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being a hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in his own inheritance at Timnath Sarah, which is in the hill country of Ephraim, north of the mountain of Gaish. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua and had known all the work which the Lord did for Israel. 
The bones of Joseph, which the people of Israel brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem, in the portion of ground which Jacob bought from the sons of Hamer, the son, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of money. It became an inheritance of the descendants of Joseph. And Eliezer, the son of Aaron, died, and they buried him at Gibeah, the town of Phinehas, his son, which had been given him in the hill country of Ephraim. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. Turning to page 86, let us say together canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deaconess of the church of Sencrea, that you may receive her in the Lord as befits the saints, and help her in whatever she may require from you, for she has been a helper of many and of myself as well. Greet Prisca and Aquila, our fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risk their necks for my life, to whom not only I, but also all the churches of the Gentiles, give thanks. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my brother, Epinetus, who has been the first convert in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked hard among you. Greet Adronicus and Junius, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. They are men of note among the apostles, and they were in Christ before me. Greet Ampilatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachys. Stay Greet Apelles, who approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Astrobulus. Greet my king's, kinsman, Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord. Typhani, and Triphosus, greet also the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, eminent in the Lord, also his mother and mine. Greet Astrinicus, Phlegion, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermes, and the brethren who are with them. Greet Philogus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle is number 19. Turning to page 94, let us say together the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, Great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A gospel, um, a reading from the gospel according to Matthew. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, 
He took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered him, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released them for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put on a scarlet robe upon him, and plating a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before the him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spat upon him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put on, put on his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now turning to page 96, we will affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. That your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things in things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, enjoyed rest and refreshment in the home of Martha and Mary of Bethany. Give us the will to love you, open our hearts to hear you, and strengthen our hands to serve you in others for his sake, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we gather ourselves to offer our prayers before God, I invite you to add your own. 
We pray this day for the church, for our Anglican communion, and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Hope within the Church of the Province of West Africa. We pray for our own Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, and Sean, our presiding bishop, elect. We pray for our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop, for the congregations of Trinity Chapel in, on Kennebunk Beach, and for St. Martin in the field in Bedford Pool. We pray for the sick and those who care, who care for them, and for our own parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Joyce, Patricia, Lori, Katie, and Donald. We offer continued prayers for Shannon, Dolores, John, Kathy, Kelly, Greg, Francisca, Barry, Will, Patricia, Bob, Jenny, Sarah, Ross, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound members, including Lily, Erlene, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations and for peoples and places of place of and for peoples in places of violence or oppression, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine and the innocent victims of the fighting in Gaza, Sudan, and Haiti. We pray for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to mitigate the climate crisis by cooperating with God's earth. We pray for our enemies and for those who wish us harm, and we pray that all people come to realize that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to keep expanding our understanding of who our neighbors are and then love those neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our own nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Kara, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish, for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for the lives of those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Catherine, Roger, Jeff, and Oma. And we pray for the departed, for victims of the wars in Ukraine and in the Holy Land, for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your Holy Church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now turning to page 101, we will say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, 
you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. This brings us to the end of our service this morning. We are always happy and grateful that you've been with us and hope that you'll join us again soon, perhaps tomorrow morning. In the meantime, may we all know the presence of God in our lives this day and find ways of reflecting that presence out into a needy and hurting world. Again, thank you for being with us. May God bless us all this day. See you soon.